Persons listening to this show should experience varying degrees of euphoria and might radiate a warm glow of truth from their entire being. This phenomenon sometimes lasts hours after a typical brain massage. If you are listening with another Lights On listener and they begin to glow, don't be concerned. This is a phenomenon normally associated with Pastor Scheidbach's patented brain massage technique and merely means the truth has set them free. The devil beware. Pastor Scheidbach is on Hello, I'm Dr. Scheidbach, pastor of the Lighthouse Baptist Church in Santa Maria, California, and your brain masseur. Get ready for your brain massage. The impeachment trial. Now, you might be getting tired of hearing about this, but uh, let me assure you that there's some added commentary you need to listen to. The angle at which I'm going to approach this will surprise you, enlighten you, and I think it will motivate you. Illegal immigration is really a big problem And it is very relevant to election 2020. Hope we'll get to that. Why do they hate Trump? Well, we've discussed that before. The obvious answer is uh, he beat Hillary. He's a loose cannon they can't control. He's a threat to the globalist agenda. He's pro-America. He's exposing Democrat corruption. He's threatening the cabal of the Biden-Hillary crime families. (laughs) He's exposing the ineptness of the Democrat Party overall. But over and above all of that... Well, now we're beginning to get to the heart of Trump hatred. Wait for it, my friends. It is time for your brain massage. Truth served here, flavored with delectable wit, succulent sagacity, luscious logic, a gourmet meal for the mind. All right, let me weigh in on the impeachment trial. I posted a link to Levin's excellent opening statement to the Senate on my uh, Facebook page, and you really ought to listen to the entire monologue. Levin is an expert on the Constitution. And he knows history. And he lays out the case for Trump powerfully. I intend to borrow from some of his insights today. But, of course, (laughs) I'll deepen the insight because, after all, I'm the brain masseur. (laughs) But really, I thought about taking Schiff's statement and just picking it apart, which would be a lot of fun and really not very hard to do. But, my friend, as I worked through that, (laughs) frankly, it just began to get boring. That guy is boring. A few general observations will suffice. First, He arrogates to himself something like omniscience, right? He knows Trump's mind. He knows his heart. He knows what his motivations were. Trump didn't do anything he can point to, but he knows why he made that call. He knows what, you see what I mean? He offers his interpretation of Trump's behaviors as if his interpretations are evidence. But not once does he offer anything remotely resembling actionable evidence or proof. At least in the Declaration of Independence, you know, when the framers put forth their denunciations of King George, well, they followed this with documented evidence of wrongdoing. They pointed to specific deeds that he did that supported the allegations. Well, this did not happen with Old Shifty. Not one specific incident of wrongdoing was presented that is supportable by anything other than his opinion or his interpretation of this that other. Nothing that a court would call evidence. Better, I should say, nothing that any reasonable person would call evidence. Do you want proof that the Democrats presented a case to the Senate that is not supported by proof? <laughs> well, they're clamoring for the Senate to go get the proof. <laughs> yeah, they're calling for the Senate to call up witnesses that they never called. And they're tasking the Senate with the work of investigating their allegations. They think the Congress is like a, what, a grand jury that approves an indictment. And that the Senate is the court where the uh, case is tried. But that's just not how the framers set up the impeachment process. I mean, it, it's more uh, like the case for impeachment is built in the Congress, and then the Senate rules on it. That is, the Senate decides the sentence. If impeachment were something the framers thought should be adjudicated in our courts, well, they would not have crafted the impeachment clause or provided for it in the Constitution. They made impeachment a constitutional process, a function of the Constitution, providing for a congressional check on the executive. But at the same time, knowing how politics work, the framers wisely provided certain protections to the executive against being harassed interminably by a partisan Congress bent on impeding an unpopular rival to their party in the execution of his executive responsibilities. The judicial branch serves only in a, in a supervisory role, if even that could be said about it, uh, the chief justice manages the proceedings, you could say. But he has no vote in the sentencing and nothing more than a polite recognition of his expertise when called for. Um, so essentially, impeachment is left to Congress. The House of Representatives impeaches and the Senate acts on the impeachment. 
it's not a court of law. And isn't that what the Democrats kept arguing when they made decisions like refusing to allow Republicans to call witnesses of their own choosing, arrogantly presuming to justify calling their own witnesses only, and then refusing to allow Republicans to cross-examine these witnesses without constant interruption and all kinds of rules to govern it. The Democrats said, well, yes, this would never be allowed in a courtroom, of course, but this is not a courtroom. I'm not kidding, my friend. That was their argument. Well, how about following the rules of the Constitution then? (laughs) How about uh, adhering to the standard for impeachment that's supposed to be treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors? Uh, Other high crimes and misdemeanors of that kind. The precedent for high crime apparently does not include specific crimes like lying under oath. Oh, at least that's what the Senate hearing the trial of Clinton decided. They said his crimes did not reach the level of high crimes and misdemeanors justifying a removal from office. 11 felony counts against Clinton, and this did not attain to the level of an impeachable offense, according to that Senate. So the Senate then censured the president for lying under oath, and afterwards the bar removed Clinton's license to practice law, but beyond that, nothing. So if precedent matters, my friends, Trump deserves to be acquitted with prejudice against the charges that were laid against him, and censure against the Congress. But, okay, how about just general rules of decorum? How about just, you know, um, the tip of the hat to honor, to fairness, to openness, to transparency? Should the Democrat Party control Congress at least be answerable to these honest expectations of the public they serve? Well, I think so, and you should keep this in mind. Now, the House sends the articles of impeachment to the Senate after a 30-day delay which, uh, you know, is impeding a constitutional process, but anyway, and argues that the Senate should proceed as a court of law. What? (laughs) The Senate should call witnesses, investigate charges, and so forth. But the Senate is not a court of law, right? The Senate is also a political body charged with duties to protect the Constitution. What the Democrats want the Senate to do is violate the constitutional protections afforded to the executive, specifically to protect it from political harassment of the kind we're watching the Congress do today. In the past, if the Congress wanted to compel the executive to deliver documents to Congress, a la Nixon, or to release cabinet members to testify to Congress, the Congress had to sue in a court of law. A Democrat, I forget his name right now, but one of the Democrat Party's so-called impeachment managers, explained why the Congress did not want to go to the courts to compel the executive to give up its constitutional privileges and comply with the ongoing harassment of our president by this Democrat Party-controlled House. Well, it was because then they wouldn't be able to get Trump impeached before the election. (laughs) Yeah, kid you not. Ergo, the point was to impeach Trump before the election. What does that suggest to your mind? It means that this is the Democrat election strategy for 2020. This is it. This is why they don't mind calling their senators off the field to sit there and do the because this is their re-election strategy. So who's using the uh, branches of government and the uh, official power of government to interfere with an election? The point thus far is that the Democrat Party is using impeachment as their campaign strategy for 2020. They did not have sufficient evidence to support their allegations of bribery or treason, so they invented two offenses they claim are impeachable offenses. Well, let's look at them. Obstruction of Congress and abuse of power. Those are the articles they sent up. But if you listen to these yahoos talk there in the Senate right now, they don't talk much about that at all. They talk about a bunch of stuff they didn't even put into the articles of impeachment. The basis of the charge that Trump obstructed Congress is that he refused to participate in their lynching. You know, (laughs) he refused to put his neck into their mob made news. Or in other words, he exercised the constitutionally provided prerogatives of his office, which were put there specifically by the framers to protect the president or the office of the president from this kind of thing. So he refused to allow the party petty Democrats access to his documents and cabinet and staff, allowing them to go on some kind of fishing expedition, looking for something they could make a case out of, sort of like the phone call between him and Zelensky. You know, privileged communication, by the way. You understand that it was actually a violation of law that uh, this was leaked without the president's approval? Right, but Trump released it in order to expose the liars for what they are. And it perfectly illustrates why the framers provided this protection for the executive. It's just nonsense. And this is the kind of thing that would just go on ad nausea if it wasn't for the protections of the executive that our framers built into the Constitution. Just look what they're doing with this phone call. Uh, we, we saw the transcript. We can see there was no quid pro or quo. <laughs> but the wicked demon-controlled Democrats want to have their 
closed door sessions, leaking out only what they want to the public to shape the narrative. And then if demanded by the Republicans to produce the full transcripts of those proceedings behind closed doors, those secret hearings, they claim congressional privilege. (laughs) So you see, when it comes to politics, a partisan cares nothing for fairness, honesty, or transparency. Nothing matters but one thing, gain and keep power for their party, punish their opponents, period. So when you hear these liars try to morph the charge from obstruction of Congress to obstruction of justice, you've noticed that from time to time, you need to immediately correct that lie. You need to jump on that and correct them immediately. Trump is not charged with obstructing justice. He is accused of exercising his constitutional powers of the executive office to protect the presidency from harassment by a partisan attack from Congress. And it works. You know, in many ways, what you're watching is how well our Constitution was crafted, how well it works at times like these to protect us from coups, to protect us from partisan politicians who care nothing at all for the Constitution, but would trample all over it to get and keep power over our government and to punish their political opponents. Remember, the violent take power by force. They take it. If you refuse to give it to them, they use force either the force of party politics or, if necessary, the force of arms. They will take power by violence. That's why they call for violence. Waters, remember, screeching about getting in our faces and shouting us down and telling us that we don't belong in their world. Yeah. I mean, it's theirs, you see, and we have no say. That's their way. They are violent people. It's in their soul to be violent and to use violence to advance their agenda. They like the wicked flee when none pursue. They're always looking over their shoulder, afraid we're going to come at them with violence, when that's completely unfounded. They're the ones who have violence in their hearts. It's why they love abortion. It's a violent way to advance their agenda or to solve the problem they're trying to address. It's why one of Bernie's campaign workers recently was exposed calling for violence, warning if Bernie does not win, there's going to be violence. It's why they threaten violence if Trump is reelected. They are violent people. Keep that in mind. They want to intimidate you by threats of violence. There's another kind of violence, the violence of maliciously twisting the words of another in a malevolent way, the violence of misrepresenting what Trump actually said, for example, in that phone call. Remember Schiff mischaracterizing that conversation in a wicked effort to plant an evil version of the conversation in the congressional record and in the minds of those hearing him? The man is a devil. He has the look of a demon-possessed man. Anyway, I'm sure you see it. Surely the Congress has the power to impeach and requires only a simple majority to do so. I mean, it can impeach on the balance of one vote, but the Senate has the power to rule on the impeachment. Its responsibility is to evaluate the case set before it by the Congress. And there is no case. There is no obstruction. Congress does not have the right to demand the executive participate in their witch hunts. The second charge, abuse of power, is ambiguous. Anyone who does not like what someone in power does can allege abuse of power. Levin outlined several actions by past presidents that virtually any reasonable mind would agree constitutes abuse of power. Policy disagreements and decisions about firing certain staff or ambassadors, these are privileges of the office and exercising the prerogatives of office does not constitute an abuse of power. You know, George Mason and James Madison are two of my favorite founders, and they actually had a disagreement on this issue. Mason wanted to include maladministration as an impeachable defense. Well, Madison immediately saw the danger of using such a broad, ambiguous term, and he said such a standard would make the president serve at the pleasure of the Senate. He was right. And so the idea was rejected. Otherwise, any political party that did not like the way the president conducted or executed the duties of his office could charge maladministration. The proof would be only their opinion that he did so. Our present Congress does not subordinate itself to the law of our land. They care only for he who has the rule makes the laws. If anyone in this debacle is acting as if they are above the law, it's the Democrats. They manipulate the law. They use the rules. They capitalize on every loophole they can find, or they create loopholes when they can. They maneuver just like devils do under the law of God. And I hope I have time to go into that. But for now, I must take a short break. I'll be right back. The battle for America is on. Jesus sent his spirit into the world. And the Bible says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Satan is the spirit of Antichrist, the end time tyrant that will rule the world with death. America is divided between those who follow the spirit of liberty and those who follow the spirit of tyranny, the spirit of Jesus Christ or the spirit of Antichrist. Which will it be? 
Election 2020 will decide whether America continues as one nation under God or falls fully into the power of the spirit of tyranny. The devil beware. Pastor Scheidbach is on Hello, the air. welcome back. I'm Dr. Scheidbach, pastor at the Lighthouse Baptist Church. Your brain masseur and Paul Revere's lantern lighter. Lighting the lamps of the church belfry arch, singling the enemy is on the march. An enemy that would steal from us our liberties. All right, so I try to lay it out for you. Let's, okay, just a little bit of recap. Now, we know, understand that Congress has the power to impeach and that the Senate sits as a kind of jury over the case. Uh, the case is made by the Congress. The jury decides guilty or not guilty. And that's actually the role of the Senate. It's not the role of the Senate to retry the case. All right. Anyway, the Senate decided they would not compel the executive to release privileged records or tip to compel the president to release cabinet or staff to testify. Good for them. But mind you, it's only because the Senate is under the control of Republicans who think like the framers did about these things that we have any protection at all. Please understand that. Now, look, the Senate will hear the case Congress is proposing, and they will hear the rebuttal from the president's supporters and his lawyers, and then they'll rule on the articles. And that's what's going on. And the prosecution has had the floor, and now the defense is beginning to make their case. And uh, as the defense makes its case, you'll notice that the uh, MSM try to spin it every way they can. Uh, to to downplay the defense. It's just, it's sickening what's going on. So what can we expect? Well, we can expect that when the defense against these baseless charges is heard in full, the Democrats are going to scream, cover up! They're already starting to do that. They protest the loudest when accusing others of doing what they're doing. This whole thing is a cover-up, all right. It's an effort on the part of the Democrats to cover for the crime boss, Biden, Clinton, and Obama. <laughs> Soon we're going to hear that the Republicans in the Senate are obstructing Congress. <laughs> yeah, watch for it. They're going to argue that, uh, you know, it's the right of the Congress to impeach. And so therefore it's incumbent upon the Senate to convict. <laughs> you know, it's wrong for the Senate controlled by the partisan politics uh, to obstruct them by denying conviction. They're going to blame partisanship on the other side. It's just amazing. They're going to argue that Senate, that the Senate acted purely as partisans, <laughs> that, that they did it only to protect Trump. They're going to accuse the Senate of attempting to control the outcome of the 2020 election. You expect all of this. You watch. These people are truly that crazy, or should I say that demonic. Nevertheless, you can expect the Senate to do the reasonable thing and acquit Trump, and then for the Congress to initiate yet another impeachment inquiry. Uh, they've already singled this. They're talking about new evidence that has supposedly surfaced, and one of their big mouths has already told us what to expect. Waters declared that Congress will impeach Trump again. Listen, the Congress has done not one single thing except to harass the president continually with false allegations, lies based on their resentment that he beat Hillary and fear that if he's not gotten out of office, he's going to uncover the whole Democrat cabal that's been milking the American people for billions in graft and payola and siphoning off hundreds of millions in deal making with foreign governments. They are absolutely terrified that this rogue president, Donald Trump, is going to blow their cover. On top of all that, they're panicked about what a Trump presidency will do to their globalist communist conspiracy to reduce American dominance in the world, to take the sword of vengeance that God put into the hands of this nation under God and turn that against Christians and against America as founded and use it to support the globalist agenda the, uh, that is against Israel, against American interests and liberty, in favor of the Antichrist agenda, and in opposition to the agenda of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, which is the Spirit of liberty and justice for all. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. That's the agenda of Christ. Allow me to use the next few minutes to pierce the darkness, to shine some light of truth on what's going on in America right now, staged before us in this effort of the House to get rid of Trump. When Schiff began his statement with a quote from Alexander Hamilton, uh, you know, in which that fine patriot expressed concern that, quote, a man unprincipled in private life, desperate in his fortune, bold in his temper, possessed of considerable talents, having the advantage of military habits, despotic in his ordinary demeanor, known to have scoffed in private at the principles of liberty, when such a man is seen to mount the hobby horse of popularity, to join in the cry of danger to liberty, to take every opportunity of embarrassing the general government and bringing it under suspicion, to flatter and fall in with all the nonsense of the zealots of the day, it may justly be suspected that his object is to throw things into confusion that he may ride the storm and direct the whirlwind, end quote. You know, anyone knowledgeable of Obama's legacy would think he, that he was describing Obama. 
But Schiff knows that Trump's unusual manners befuddle the gentry. He scorns the snobs. Trump shows open disdain for the aristos. He talks like the common man. He walks among the real soldiers of American enterprise. The people, the real people who make America work. The working class adore him. The little people. He's one of us. He does not talk like the rulers. He doesn't pontificate like snobs who think themselves better than us. He comes across like a neighbor you have coffee with, joking with us and not making us the joke. No president has been more approachable, and none have taken the mantle of champion for America like he has. The America we grew up in. Finally, someone has come along who represents us, the people who make America, who continue to hold the values and cherish the ideals that made America great. And so he has come along to make America great again. It resonates with us because we know America is great, that many have come along to paint America as a a loser, as failed, as a joke to the European snobs, but we know better. We know what we are. We know who we are. And we have deeply resented having a president who went on his apology tour, who apologized for America, who embarrassed us in the world. Trump sees us the way we see us. Incredible that Schiff should read this and see Trump. I read it and I see Clinton, Obama, him, Pelosi, Biden. Crime boss Biden. They need Biden in office like they needed Clinton there. To protect the corruption cabal. To keep the money flowing into the coffers of America's enemies. To keep the Antichrist agenda funded and moving forward toward the goal of reducing America to a third-rate dictatorship. Who has scoffed in private at the principles of liberty? Certainly not Trump. Obama has. Clinton has. Schiff has. Schiff is himself a mockery of the principles of liberty. He has trampled upon virtually every American ideal of justice and judgment and equity. Guilty until proven innocent. No allowance for a defense. Wickedly distorting the statements of the target of his vendetta against justice and against the people that voted for the opponent of the candidate he preferred. Schiff was describing himself. And that's the way it is with these people today. They are guilty for every charge they have fabricated against Trump. So what is this all about? Well, like I said, of course, there are the obvious answers. He beat Hillary, and this deprived Shifty of his dream job in Hillary's administration. Trump is a loose cannon, and the arrogant government aristos can't control him. He is upsetting the apple card of the status quo. He's pro-America. He's exposing Democrat corruption. He's threatening the cabal of the Biden-Hillary crime families. He's threatening to drain the swamp, and, well, that threatens thousands of bureaucrats who serve and support the cabal in the dirty swamp. He's exposing the ineptness of the Democrat Party, who can't get anything done, who've had control for so long and have done nothing. And he's come along and fixed so much in so short a time. Uh, The party who, for example, have done nothing in this Congress except to impeach a president, and they did a bad job of that. And a president, by the way, who's done more for our economy and liberty than any president in recent history. But over and above all that, he's the Christian's champion. He's leading the charge against those that rage. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. To get out from under the Christian heritage and the Christian influence on our cultural values. He was elected to office by many, but the base of his support, it's understood to be evangelical Christians, who see in him a representation of the typical American, a real person who understands the fundamentals of what makes America work, who stands as a shield protecting us from the efforts of these wicked and unreasonable people who want to take away our liberties. Christians can identify with him because they too, like all humans, are flawed, and we have weaknesses that we all share, including those self-righteous aristos. But we cherish the ideal of American values, and they don't. Only the silly, superficial Christianettes can be so deeply offended by Trump's persona that they can't see past that and see the core values that he represents and supports. The values that actuate this man, that move him, that shape him. He's not blinded by the spirit of darkness prevailing on the left, political correctness, the nonsense of gender confusion, the darkness of abortion. Anyone who can know what abortion is and support it today is a dark soul indeed. There is no longer any pretense about fetus or blob of tissue. They will murder a full-term baby and then fist bump and high five and say, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. The evil of such hearts is the evil of Auschwitz. It's the darkness of Nazi Germany reprised. It's the same spirit that would rationalize re-education camps to indoctrinate Christians against Christ the King. And that would kill those who refuse to be so indoctrinated. I tell you, it is the spirit of Antichrist 
raging against the spirit of Jesus Christ in our country today. Characteristics of those motivated, controlled, and influenced by the spirit of Antichrist are easy to see. Satan loves to shed the innocent blood of infants, doesn't he? And old Moloch receiving the babies of the heathen into its arms to burn them to death. That's his thing, man. Remember Herod who sent the soldiers to Ramah to murder all babies two years and under. That's their thing, you see. Watch for this crowd to begin calling for a parent's right to murder their children even after they're born. Oh, wait, that's already happening. Northam, the adversary of our Second Amendment, said this in answer to a question about a very controversial abortion bill being presented then in Virginia that lost, thank God. Quote, if a mother is in labor, I can tell you exactly what would happen. Uh, In parentheses, if that bill had been passed, And he goes on, the infant would be delivered. The infant would be kept comfortable. The infant would be resuscitated if that's what the mother and family desired. And then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother. So I think this was really blown out of proportion in court. Really? Is that a proportion? All right. It's outside anything like the bounds of decency or a a, a, a basic regard for human life. Protection for the most vulnerable humans. The, the inf- Such people rage against biblical Christians. Such people have an innate hatred of biblical Christians. They squirm in our light and are agitated by our salt. The resentment of these people against us cannot be accounted for by reason. It's irrational to want to allow for the murder of babies. It's unnatural. It's counter to the most basic of human instincts. Only one thing can account for it. Another characteristic of the Antichrist spirit is suspicion against anyone having power to protect themselves. Yeah, they don't trust you with guns. Only the government can have them. Typical Antichrist doctrine is 180 degrees out of phase with Jesus' trust of his disciples and his instruction that they should get a sword. And we know that was not for advancing the kingdom of God on earth. That was made very clear. It was for self-protection in a hostile world where the violent take by force the liberties God ordained to every person created in his image. It was for defense, not for aggression. They do not trust anyone with a gun except themselves. Every society governed by the spirit of Antichrist does not want the people to bear arms. Check it out. Every place where Christianity is hated, they want to kill babies and they want to deprive the citizenry from having arms for self-protection. Government control over every aspect of your personal life. Yeah, that's a sure marker of the Antichrist spirit. Jesus' spirit is all about liberty. It's about trusting citizens with making their own decisions about what they believe and how best to pursue their own happiness. The Antichrist spirit sees anyone who resists the government telling them what to believe and how to pursue their own happiness as a threat to their control. Christian nations grant freedom that the Antichrist spirit attempts to turn against us. But when they cross the line and begin encroaching on our liberties, on our freedoms, well, that's when we say thus far and no farther. Globalism is another characteristic of the Antichrist agenda. The Antichrist spirit is always working to unite the world under a single head of power that will control all the assets of the planet as tyrants. Well, I've run out of time. I can show you from the Bible that these things and some others are characteristic of the spirit of Antichrist. And it's amazing. We live in a day when every characteristic of the spirit of Antichrist is embodied in the Democrat Party. You want to know why they hate Trump so much? His policies reflect those of the spirit of Jesus Christ. He acknowledges God and Christ and any self-righteous Christianette from Christianity today who pretends he is sufficiently righteous to cast stones at what by all accounts as a growing Christian is disgusting to grace and it's full of the sort of pride that God resists. Trump governs according to the principles of liberty as conceived by our founders and set up on the foundation of our Christian faith. And that's why they rage and scream and cut themselves and stab themselves and go stark raving mad. The devils in them hate the spirit of Christ in us. Yeah, and that spirit is encouraged and strengthened in the land under the leadership of this president. So there. So I'm out of time. I've let the Lamps in the Church Belfry Arch. Now you let me know you see they're on. Call 1-805-314-2114. Leave a message. Lights on if you agree. Lights off if you don't. Email me by going to our website, brainmassage.net. That's brainmassage.net. Find the contact button. Send me an email. God bless you. God bless America. And I'll see you in church.